Yeah, I remember to my mum. Back in whew, probably about five or six years ago. So it, it was about 18 months before I joined the air ambulance. Um, one of the paramedics had come through to me when I was with the police and just said, we're actually going to your mum. They're meeting the ambulance in South Moulton. And then now I've got a job with the police. So I was going in the police aircraft one way and they were going in the air ambulance another way to pick up my mum. So that was quite hard to dig a little bit deeper within myself to focus on the job. Um, but I knew that she was in safe hands and everything else. And they, they flew into rd &E and gave her, uh, she had four or five stents in the end um, and lived another three years, four years after that. Um, so that was definitely the confirmation that, yeah, it, it touches me because I've I, I benefited from the service as well. But also growing up down here, it's so rural and we're so remote that Air Ambulance is definitely bringing a huge amount out to the communities. Um, and what's changed in the last sort of six and a bit years I've been with them is, is, is huge. We've gone from just an air ambulance. So we would just fly to scene quickly, patch up the patient, take them to the nearest hospital. We are now a mobile hospital. So we bring hospital level care to that patient. So you've got anaesthetist doctors, they'll open hearts up, they'll pull legs, do stuff. They can, the drugs that they carry can do certain things that wouldn't happen probably three or four hours down the line would be able to deliver this on scene. So our scene times takes a long time, so we're, we're up to an hour, hour and a half sometimes with a patient before we potentially just put them in a road ambulance and drive them to hospital, often with our team. We don't always fly them anymore because it's sometimes it's better for the patient, it's, it's less stressful. We can stop at any moment in the, in the road ambulance um, and they can, they can spread out more and they can do, do more things. But then other times, actually, right from here, they need to go to Plymouth, then obviously we'd fly, or if it's a child, we need to go to Bristol, so we'll whiz them up to Bristol. And, and so the aircraft's still used a lot for the patient side, but not as much as it used to be. It's more about getting all that team and all their specialised equipment to, to the scene um, as quick as possible. And there's a huge sense of ownership around Devon, isn't there? Yeah. Definitely. I think more than most other charities, uh, air ambulances or charities around the country, because I think we're the, the only ones that we own the helicopter, or the helicopters now. Um, all the pilots are directly employed, all the paramedics now are directly employed by the charity. We've got the, the shops, the 18 shops around around the county. Um, and I think most people feel that they either directly been touched by it or they know someone that has been. Um, and, and now that I think because the paramedics and us are all in, directly involved with the charity more and we all live locally so we're all sort of embedded in our communities and stuff so they, they really feel that they, yeah, they know someone in the, in the charity or we know obviously lots of people know people that have been affected by it. You plainly love your job though. Yeah absolutely yeah very, very passionate about sell it. it. Sell it. So um, anyone can fly um, any, but within the flying world um, to be able to, three minutes from the phone going, you're off. You've got that sort of adrenaline type of buzz. Most of us have had the, the main adrenaline buzz taken out of us, thankfully, because we're all sort of old and crusty now. And, and But it's more, we don't know where we're going. And then we work out where we're going. How we can make the team a better team on the way. How we can get as close as we need to. Um, what we can offer. So you, you are being challenged in, on every flight. Um, which is good. Uh, it's not just a flight to an oil rig or a flight to an airport. This is, this is high end stuff, and you've got to. There's lots of dynamic thinking and lots of doors closed, and how can I get around that regulation? Or you've got to be very wary that everyone's got a phone and everyone's got a camera on that phone and everyone's taking pictures all the time. So you have to comply and you have to make sure that you're you're not a cowboy and you're doing the job properly. And hopefully. Um, that's why we get tested, that's why we select the people we do for, for the air ambulance, um, that um, everyone is professional and, and gets the job done. And what would you say to that seven-year-old boy on x Um He's made it, hasn't he? He's done well. <laughs> and it's quite, and now as taking over his, well, as senior pilot will become chief pilot, um, we're just having a restructure. It, I, I, I still pinch myself going, is this really me? That um, there was me just driving the tractor at sort of, 13, 14, cutting the grass, looking at the planes and helicopters going past, thinking, yeah, I'd love to do that. And yeah, I am actually in there. I was still fascinated by tractors <laughs> as well. But uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's a lovely job.